This video covers our section on modeling with linear equations from our chapter on growth and mathematical modeling. This section is continuing what we covered in the previous section and kind of adding on to some of our techniques we'll use to build linear models. Our first objective is learner builds a linear model using a point and a slope. We're going to take full advantage of our slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Uh, m is representing our slope and b is representing our y-intercept. When we apply this to linear models, we'll think of our slope m as the rate of change and the quantity b as the fixed or initial value. We'll start with a pretty basic example. It's not really a modeling problem, um, but we're given a slope and a point and we want to build an equation that represents this line. So it says find the linear equation uh, of the line with a slope of negative five. So let's make a quick note of what we have here. Um, our slope is negative five. Oops, there we go. Uh -huh. Um, m equals negative 5, and our point is 1, 1. Notice this tells us that x equals 1 and y equals 1 in our point, right? And this is important because we want our equation, obviously, in y equals mx plus b, but we're not given b in any way. Remember, b is a very specific point. It's the y-intercept. It's not simply the y-coordinate of our, our point that we're given. So we need to find some way to solve for b. Notice this equation has four variables in it, and if we have any three of them, we can find the fourth. So if we want b, hopefully we have a y, an m, and an x to plug in, which we do, right? We have our m, which is our slope. We have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So we're actually gonna plug these three things in and solve for our b. So y is one, that was our y coordinate of our point. m was negative five. It's being multiplied by the x coordinate here, which is one as well. And we're gonna use this to solve for b. So a quick simplification, negative five times one is negative five still. And if we wanna solve this for B, all we have to do is add five to both sides. And we get that B equals six. All right, so we used the values that we had to solve for our B value. And now our final answer will be Y equals MX plus B with M is negative five and B is six. So Y equals negative five X plus six. This is now the equation that represents the line. And we can use kind of the same techniques, although we might switch it up a little bit, um, to apply this to a modeling scenario. So let's look at example two here, um, and we will try this out. It says in 2016, the average student loan debt per borrower was $32,731 and was increasing at a rate of 20% per year. Assume this growth remains constant and use this information to create a linear model and predict the year when the average debt will reach $50,000. So we're given a starting value in 2016, our amount was 32,731, and we're sort of given a rate. It says 20% per year, but we're gonna assume that growth rate remains constant. So what we needed to figure out first is, um, what is 20% of that starting rate, 32,731? And then we can treat that like our constant growth rate, our M. So let's start by calculating uh, 20%, which is the same thing as 0.20 or 0.2 times 32,731. If I throw that into the calculator real quick, I get about 6,546.2 or 20 cents. That is our, our constant growth rate, which is our slope, by the way. Our rate of change, that is our M value. Okay, so let's think about what we have now. We have a point, right, in 2016. Oops, 2016, it was 32,731. And we have our M value, which is 6,546.20. Notice you don't always have to do a calculation to calculate your M. Uh, this one was worded slightly irregularly where it says 20% uh, of the original but often they'll just give you the growth rate. They'll say it's increasing by, you know, 6,000 per year or something like that. So this one had an extra little step there where we have to figure out what is 20% of our starting. Okay, but now we have a point and a slope. So we could do exactly what we did in the last problem. We could plug in our X, plug in our Y, um, plug in our M and solve for B. But there's actually something a little bit better we can do. And it involves redefining our X values. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this point, And since we only have one piece of information or one uh, point, and it starts in the year 2016, we're gonna treat the year 2016 as year zero. It's our starting year. And then the 32,731, we're gonna keep the same. 
But what, what this does is automatically if x is zero, that means the number that goes with it in the ordered pair is going to be our b value. This is our y-intercept. So basically we're just saying 2016 is our starting year. We're gonna treat 32,731 as our starting value, which will be b, and now we have y equals mx plus b. There's only one tiny catch here. We have just redefined our x values. Instead of using x as just the raw years, like 2016, 2017, et cetera, we're letting x be the number of years, number of years after 2016. Okay, so we're setting year zero as 2016, and now x is representing the number of years after. That'll be important in one second, but let's go ahead and write our model now. Our model is y equals mx. m again was 6,546. Go ahead and just use 0.2. So mx plus b, which is our starting value of 32,731. Okay, so this is the first part of our answer. We created a model that models a scenario. X is the number of years after 2016. You plug in, plug that in, and it'll tell you um, what the average student loan debt per borrower, borrower will be during the year that you selected. So for example, the question now is, uh, predict the year when the average debt will reach $50,000. Predict the year means find an X value, right? So if you wanna find an X value, we have to have a Y value to work with. So one quick second to make some space. So it says find the year, which means find X. So to summarize this, we want to find X when, well, it says when the student loan debt will reach $50,000, which is the Y value, right? Y is representing uh, the average student loan debt. So when Y equals $50,000. Okay, so that's pretty easy to do. We're gonna take this equation. We're gonna plug in 50,000 for Y. And we are going to solve this equation for X. So if we want to get X by itself, first we need to move this 32,731 to the other side by subtracting it from both sides. So real quick on the calculator, take 50,000 minus 32,731. And I'm getting 17,269 equals just our MX now. 6,546.2x. And then of course, if we want to get x by itself at this point, we need to divide both sides uh, by this number being multiplied by x. 6,546.2 on both sides. Again, quick calculator work. One more, make some room. So take that number divided by 6546.2. And I'm getting an X value. Now X is standing for years. Let's go ahead and just round it to the nearest whole number here. I'm getting something like 2.638, 2.6. Let's call that three for simplicity. We could do 2.6, but let's just call it three for now. So X is about equal to three. Now, remember, we're trying to find a year here. So our answer can't be three. It's not the year three. X is standing for the number of years after our starting year. And our starting year was 2016. So really, we're going to take 2016 and add three to it. And this gives us the year 2019, roughly. Okay, so if the growth rate continues at the same rate each year, then we can predict that by the year 2019 or during the year 2018 probably, right, um, the average student loan debt will reach $50,000. Okay, so that's our modeling for our first objective, giving a, giving a slope and a point. Um, we're gonna continue this in objective two where we use two points to build a linear model. The only catch here is if you have two points, you don't have the slope. So obviously your first step is we need to figure out what the slope is. And luckily we have this slope formula, which takes in two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, and it calculates the slope m, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So it's pretty straightforward and easy to use. We're gonna go ahead and try it out here um, on our first example. I recommend when you, do, when you use this formula, go ahead and label your points. So, x1, y1 will be my first point, the second point, x2, y2. Just so I don't get confused at all about what I'm plugging in where. So this is our slope formula. And our y2 minus y1 
y2 is going to be negative 7 in this case, and y1 will be 1. x2 is 6 minus x1. Be very careful here because it's x2 minus x1, and our x1 also has a minus. You need to make sure you get both of those minuses in there. Also, just so you know, I called the first point x1, y1, and the second one x2, y2, but I could have flipped this. The first one could be x2, y2, the second one x1, y1. It'll still work out in the long run. Just be consistent. Pick a point, label them, make sure you plug them in the right places. Okay, so negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. 6 minus negative 3 is actually 6 plus 3, which is 9. So we get a slope or rate of change of negative 8 ninths. Okay, now we need to find an equation. So let's think about what we have here. Um, we have a slope, m, and we actually have two points to work with. So we can do what we did back at the beginning, where if you have a slope and a point, you can plug them in and solve for b. It doesn't actually matter which point we use. So let's go ahead and use our first point. Our x for, from our first point is negative 3. Our y is 1. And we're going to plug this into y equals mx plus b and solve for b. So our y coordinate, which was 1. Our m, which is our slope, negative 8 ninths, multiplied by x, which is negative 3, plus b. Okay, now we want to solve this for b. So let's see here. Negative 8 ninths times negative 3. A negative times negative is positive. Uh, the 3 and this 9 will cross cancel. You'll end up with 3 at the bottom. You're welcome to just throw this in the calculator, by the way. But I'm pretty sure um, we're going to end up with 8 thirds here. And this equals 1 plus b. And now we want to get b by itself. So we just need to subtract the 8 thirds to the other side. And 1 minus 8 thirds, can you can think of 1 as 3 over 3. So 3 minus 8 would be negative 5 over 3. So I'm just write it over here real quick. b equals negative 5 thirds. Okay, so we have our m, we have our b, so our model will be y equals, our slope again was negative 8 ninths, so mx plus b, since it's negative, let's just do minus 5 thirds. So using a point and a slope, we've come up with our equation in slope intercept form. I'm sorry, using two points, right? We started with two points, then we created our, our slope by using the slope formula, then we had a point and slope. So it's basically what we did last time, but with one extra step, where first you use the slope formula. Let's apply this to a modeling problem. It says, suppose there were 117,000 computer programming jobs in 2010, and that number increased to 295,000 in 2017. Model this information with the linear equation, predict the number of computer programming jobs in the year 2025. Let's write these values as two points. It says there are 117,000 in 2010. You pretty much always want to choose time as your x value. So I'm actually going to start this point by putting 2010 first, and then 117. And our second point will be 2017 and 295. Now before we get going with our, um, our slope formula, let's do what we did in the previous modeling problem and call our first year year zero. This will make our numbers smaller and easier, and also it'll save us from having to solve for b, because whatever our first year is, the value that goes with that will automatically be b. So 2010 is our first year. We're going to call that year zero. And of course, 117 is what goes with that. We, are, we now know 117 is b. It's going to be our initial value. Now, if 2010 is our first year, 2017 is seven years after that. So we're going to call this point 7 to 95. We have implicitly defined, let's, let's do it explicitly. Um, x is the number of years after 2010. Why, by the way, is, um, let's not write it out, but why is uh, the number of thousand computer programming jobs during the year, right? So it's in thousands. Okay, so um, now let's use our slope uh, formula. So again, just real quick, real small here, x1, y1, I'm going to call this, x2, y2, I'm going to call the second one, and we're going to throw this in the slope formula. Okay, so y2 minus y1, that'll be 295 minus 117. x2 minus x1, 7 minus 0. I can do the, problem, the bottom pretty easily, but let's go ahead and throw the top in the calculator real quick. I get 178. And if I divide that by 7, 
I don't get a very clean number, um, but let's go ahead and let's say we want one decimal point here, 25.4. Okay, so I rounded this to the nearest tenth. I got about 25.4. So that is our M, our rate of change. And since we don't need to solve for B, remember if we define this as year zero, then the Y value that goes with it is automatically our B. We're ready to write our formula. Our equation in Y equals MX plus B is Y equals 25.4X plus B, which is 117. There's our linear model. And then lastly, we need to use it to make a prediction. It says predict the number of computer programming jobs in the year 2025. Keep in mind our equation has two variables. The questions are often given one, find the other. So which one are we given and which one are we asked to find? It says predict the number of computer programming jobs. That's a Y value. And they give us the year 2025, which is an X value. So X is 2025, Y is our answer. However, we have to be careful. X isn't exactly 2025, because remember, we defined X as the number of years after 2010. So quick note here for 2025, because it is what, 15 years after 2010, we're gonna call this X equals 15. Okay, so be careful when you re, uh, um, define your X's, you need to make sure that you use them properly in your problem. So we just need to find Y and we're gonna plug in our X value of 15, right? 15 years after 2010 or 2025. And basically Y is already by itself. So we can just plug this whole thing into the calculator. And I'm getting 498. We can say in the year 2025, there will be about 498,000 computer programming jobs, according to our model. All right, so that's it for um, our section here on modeling with linear equations. Hope it helps. Let me know if you have any questions, and uh, thanks for watching.